We start with the ArcMap program opened to a new blank map. Using the Add Data button in the upper left, we can bring our shapefile into the map by clicking Add Data and browsing to the file location of the shapefile. Select the shapefile, click Add, and we can see the points we mapped for hydrants drawn in the map view. We can see the data layer we just added listed in the table of contents on the left. By right-clicking this layer and selecting Open Attribute Table, we can see the attribute data that we collected in association with each point. Now let's give these hydrants some context by adding a base map. We can do this by clicking the Add Data button and this time selecting Add Base Map. There are a number of different base maps to choose from. Note that the use of these base maps requires an active internet connection as the base maps themselves are housed on Esri servers. We will use a topographic base map for now by selecting topographic and clicking add. Now that we have a base map, these hydrant locations are starting to look good. Next, we will cover a few simple ways you can symbolize your data. Right-click the Hydrants data layer in the Table of Contents and select Properties. From the Layer Properties window, navigate to the Symbology tab. On the left, in the column under Show, select Categories. This will allow you to divide the data into categories and symbolize each category differently as opposed to using the same symbol for all hydrants. Once Categories has been selected, click the drop-down menu under Value Field. Here, we are selecting the field from the Layers Attribute table that we will use to symbolize the data into categories. We will select the Manufacturer field to symbolize the hydrants by their manufacturer. With the field selected, we then click the Add All Values button on the bottom. This adds each unique value from the Manufacturer field in the Layers Attribute table. We can then assign new symbols to these values by double-clicking the symbol shown next to each value in the center. This opens the Symbol Selector window where a new symbol may be assigned. We will give each manufacturer a new color and increase their sizes a little so we can see them better. Using the Identify tool, we can see that the symbols have been applied correctly. If you would like to use custom or predefined symbology, you can import symbology from a .lyr file. We will do this using a .lyr file we have already created for this purpose. To do so, right-click the Hydrants layer in the Table of Contents and select Layer Properties. Back on the Symbology tab, click Import in the upper right. On the Import Symbology window, leave the first radio button selected that says Import Symbology Definition from another layer in the map or from a layer file. Click the yellow folder icon to browse to the location of the .lyr file that you would like to use. In this case, we will select our waterhydrants.lyr file and click Add and then click OK. The symbol from the .lyr file is shown in the center, and by clicking Apply, all hydrants in the layer will be drawn with our custom symbol. Next, we will cover the basic process for mapping our data in Google My Maps. Google Maps and Google My Maps are different sites. On the My Maps homepage, select 
Create a new map in the upper left. This opens up a new map with a base map and one empty data layer. You can switch between a variety of different base maps using the base map drop down menu on the left. To add data into the empty data layer, click the blue import button under the layer's name in the table of contents. The import window tells you which file types can be used with My Maps CSV, XLSX, KML, or GPX. You can drag and drop the appropriate files here to add them to the map or click the blue Select a File button to browse to the data. We will browse to the KML file we downloaded from Fulcrum. After selecting the file, the data is added into our map. Using your mouse scroll wheel or the plus or minus buttons in the bottom right will allow you to zoom the map in and out. In the table of contents on the left, we can see all the points in this layer. The data we collected for these points can be accessed by clicking the menu button to the right of the layer name, represented by three vertical dots, and selecting Open Data Table. The Individual Styles button under the layer name gives us options for how to symbolize the data. The Style Data by Column option allows us to select an individual field from the data table and symbolize the data based on those values, like we did with the Manufacturer field in ArcMap. For now, we will select Uniform Style which will allow us to apply the same symbol to all points in the layer. In the table of contents, where each individual point used to be listed, it now says All Items. Using the Paint Bucket button to the right of All Items, we can set symbology for the layer. Here, we can change the point's color or select from a few popular icons. The More Icons button on the bottom shows you the full list of icons native to My Maps. To use your own custom symbol, click the Custom Icon button on the bottom left. This opens the File Import window. Just like when adding data to a layer, you may drag and drop the appropriate file here or browse to it by clicking the blue Select a File button. The file types that Google My Maps will accept for symbology are image files, such as JPEGs or PNGs. We will browse to the image file we want to use for our point symbol, in this case, our Hydrant PNG image. After the image file has been selected, you can see our new custom icon in the list of available icons. With our new symbol selected, Clicking OK applies the symbol to all points in the layer. When you have completed building your map, you can share your finished product using the Share button on the table of contents. After clicking Share, you will be asked to provide a title and description for your map. Next, in the Sharing Settings window, you will see at the top a link to your map has been generated. This link can be shared via Gmail, Facebook, or Twitter using the buttons below your link, or you can copy and paste the link directly. You can configure the privacy settings for your map in the Who Has Access section. You may also invite individuals to view your map by name or email address in the Invite People section. Clicking Done will apply any changes you have made and send invitations to view your map to the users you have specified, if any.